to figure out the difference between the two. The liquid stool mixed with blood is interception. Use abdominal ultrasound. This is ultrasound for pyloric stenosis. Projectile vomiting is pyloric stenosis. BUN of 25 is a sign of dehydration, pyloric stenosis. Nonbilious emesis is pyloric stenosis. And pneumonic enema is intersusception. And then she went to the NICU. It's a two weeks old, no, one day old, pretty much old, born, boy. After first feed, oral feed, right? Start, started having fever, abdominal distension, Okay, respiratory distress. And then erythema on the abdominal wall. What is wrong with this patient? If you don't know, the nurse, the other nurse already have a plan for this. She said what? MPO. She said what? Antibiotic. Say so what? IV fluid. Say so what? Prepare the surgery. Say so what? Hold for hold for our feet. And that's what she said. And I know a lot of people will choose some answers because they forget to pay attention to the concept. One day old, premature boy, after first feed, oral, fever, abdominal distension, respiratory distress, erythema on the abdominal wall, and enterocolitis, it's called necrotizing, necrotizing enterocolitis. So that means the abdominal wall, this, the blood and the bowel is dying. If you know it's, there's a dying abdomen, then every time you have a GI problem, there's certain things constant that you should be able to do. You don't even have to worry about it. Necrotizing enterocolitis, what would it be? The small bowel is dying. Therefore, at minimum, his kid needs to be MPO. We fed the baby and it gets sick. At minimum, don't eat anything. When, if you're getting disease sick in your GI tract, antibiotic would be good. And if you're MPO, you get IV fluid. We prepare you for surgery because there's tissue dying. And we hold oral feeds because that's what is making you sick. Do you have to memorize this? No. Make sense out of it. Now, once again, what are your anchors? You don't have to know everything. You don't have to memorize everything about any problem, uh, condition. Go for the bad way, the concept of enterocolitis. If you take it, you say, what is the problem? It's because of the oral feed. The kid GI tract is not mature, so they are sick inside, enterocolitis. And therefore, I know what to expect. The bowel is going to die. If I'm not going to eat, all these things is applicable. What did she do? Went to the NICU again. It's the same three and uh, two and uh, three days old kid. Okay, three days old kid. The same. Um, but she, I mean, that kid has like fruity uh, saliva. I mean, drooling. And every time they feed a kid, turn blue, they turn blue. So feeding, I turn blue every time. Okay, the abdomen is distended also. 
who is this? The kid say, who am I? Fetch me. Next, try to put the NG tube. You start coiling. NG tube, coiled. And, and could you not know, pass it? So that is the clue she got from me. What is this problem? And uh, anticipated plan, MPO, and out of the bed, aspiration rates. Okay. G2, IV fluid. So that's a plan. This way, anticipated plan. I'm waiting for this to come. For Geo Fistula. So this kid has signs and symptoms of tracheus of a Geo Fistula. It's because the esophagus coming like that and it's atresia, the trachea come like that. But there's a connection here with the esophagus. So you go here like that and you go into the stomach. So every time you take a breath, you go into your stomach, your stomach get distended. Every time you try to eat, you stay here, you can't go down, you go back into the trachea, you turn blue. If you put an NG tube in, it's going to call inside. And you're going to have fully saliva because you can swallow your saliva, it comes up. Therefore, you're going to draw. They all make sense. Nobody made them up. Signs and symptoms is consistent with the, uh, the information. Signs and symptoms is consistent with what you can see. You don't have to memorize it, like I said. I want you guys to like, you know, in case it's hard, but sometimes figure out some way to make it easy for yourself. So those signs and symptoms is consistent. So tracheoesophageal fistula is different from necrotizing enterocolitis. They are young patients and they're very, very small, but they have this problem, right? The nurse was doing some rounds and he saw uh, two kids. He saw two kids also in the NICU. They are all premature. And one of them has um, the bowel is outside the abdomen. Okay, one is on the left side and it's through the umbilicus. The other one is bowel is outside, but it's contained within a sac. And it's coming through the midline. What is the difference between them? So this is the abdomen, one key that's everything with the bow inside. You can see the, like a ball here. The other guy, this is the opening, but the bow is all outside here. So she's trying to figure out, she picked, she took a test book, nursing test book and trying to figure out, can you help her? It cannot be the sense and illustration. They are our kids. It's a kid, they cannot illustrate. So and they cannot have an illustration. The essence and illustration are for somebody who just had surgery. They are associated with surgery not born with it. So these kids, they are in the premature and they have bowel. So they have never had surgery. If you have sac, it's an unfollow cell. So this is all unfollow cell. If you have no sac, 
this is what gastrochesis. So gastrochesis, and this is on parallel cell. Which of this is indicated? MPO, right? IV fluid. Think about the rest. So these ends and uh, illustration and not what this is it. They need antibiotic. We got to control their temperature. We should not cover the bar with petroleum. This is going to absorb heat and affect the bowel. We should use saline soak gauze. That's what you're going to use. So that's what is going to happen to that patient. Well, she's still not happy. She saw a one day old and that's not part of meconium. And then when she check, there is no the kid lack of you know opening. This is you saw a kid who has not not passed meconium in 24 to 48 hours. This kid is like vomiting, bilious, or sometimes feculent emesis. And the abdomen is very distended. And then uh, and she, there's the inner opening, but very tight inner sphincter. I've given you the content to be able to distinguish between these two disease processes. I'm trying to let you be familiar with them. If you do that in NCLOS, the rest is easy. If you're able to hear the name and you know key words about them, guess what? That's what the NCLOS will ask you. They're not going to ask you other normal stuff, you know. It's the key words to distinguish between these. So two babies, one day old, right? One has not passed mucanium uh, within 24 hours, and then it like you know opening. A second baby has not passed mucanium. I do not spell it right. Mucanium in 24 to 48 hours. He's vomiting. He has emesis. The abdomen is distended. He has anal opening and very tight anal sphincter. So A is imperforated anus, and B is Ashburn disease. As you can see, it's an Ashburn. This is an Ashburn baby. Ashburn baby, and A is imperforated anus, and B is Ashburn. Both of them, we need colostomy, but their presentation is different. Their physical exams is different. These are cases you see, the nurse will see, and need to report it to the doctor immediately. So one of the kids was uh, did well, uh, discharged home. Two months later, and started having uh, upper runny nose and some sore throat. My mother gave the kid Pepto Bismol. All of a sudden, the kid is lethargic, right? Confused. And he has poor feeding. What is your diagnosis? You can see what I'm trying to do to you guys. They're like, which of this the next shoe expect? not expected. Flapping tremor. Right. Elevated ammonia. 
this is Ray syndrome. He's a kid, he has a viral two mantle viral problem giving salicylate derivative is now confused for feeding that is encephalopathy, hepatic encephalopathy. So that's Ray syndrome. This is a sign of encephalopathy expected. Ammonia is expected. This doesn't happen acutely. It will take some time, right? AST will be elevated, right? So ALT will be elevated. The platelet to be low, you should have portal hypertension. So it will never happen. Even though you see it in liver failure, this patient is not going to have liver failure. It's acute onset. So yes, the liver will not have enough time to form cirrhosis. Are you going to see flapping tremor, elevated ammonia? AST, ALT will show some liver damage, necrosis. So they will be expected. This kid is five year old with recurrent lung infection. Right. His stool is incipated, incipated, right? But sometimes he has voluminous fatty stool. Most of the time, what is your diagnosis? And which of these plans do you anticipate it? This kid has cystic fibrosis. It's due to sodium chloride channel. Therefore, the has two like fluid, sodium. It can get insipated and it cannot absorb fat from the pancreas. And so this is the way um, they have large voluminous too. In order to help with these kids, replace their fat soluble vitamin, give them enzymes with their food and snack. This is a trap. Their pancreas does not work. That probably if you give them high carbohydrates, they will become, they will develop diabetes. They will need high fat diet. They will need a social worker. They will need social worker, which will help with their function and help them schedule appointment. The kid will need salt tabs because they need sodium, mucomist to break down the secretion. And then avoid exercise is a trap. They should not avoid exercise. Even though they go outside and they will be warm and they will lose some salt, you still have to exercise to improve your lung function. So don't avoid exercise, just keep on exercising. Just make sure you don't go outside when it's too warm. So the kid who was giving pep to this more, The nurse, okay, said, okay, which of this is indicated or not indicated? They, they, um, the patient will prescribe lactulose, okay? But this is the, Peptobismol is a salicylate derivative. It contains salicylic acid, which is the same ingredient is in aspirin. So we titrate it two to three bar movement. You don't mix it with food. You mix it with the only thing you can give it without food, but milk is fine. You don't give it just orally. You can give it enema if they can take it. You can monitor for potassium, sodium, and check the fluid status and check ammonia level. <laughs> 